Well, here we are in our third video of this new series of um, GUI Hangman featuring SQL. So in this video, we'll add one of the expanded functionalities that our new data, data store can actually support because now it's run, it's run off a database. So we're gonna have a login screen so users can log in. This will allow the user, the program to keep track of who the users are and a record of their plane. Um, so the first thing we wanna do is to actually generate our new um, user interface. So we had our previous user interface. Now in video one, you should have copied the new version down. Um, now if you open that actually up in QT Designer, you will see it looks like this. So we've got a login. If I scroll through these screens, you'll notice, well, that's familiar. That's, that's pretty much what we used to have. We've got three extra streams, screens. We've got our login screen, we've got a register screen, and we've got our stats screen, okay? So that's our three different ones. For the login, it's important to know we've got um, different named items. You can see here LG, username LE. That means login screen, username, and LE means line edit. So that's actually where, um, that's what that pointer box is called, a little text box. Same with that. We've got our LG login button. We've got our LG register button. Um, and in here, there is actually a little LG message label, which currently has nothing in it, but that's how we can pop messages up to our users um, so they can see. So that is what the actual new user interface is like. So like we did back in our first video series, we need to take the UI file, which is this one here, and we need to convert it into a Python file, which is gonna look like our um, UI hangman Python file here. So to do that, when you come down, make sure you have your virtual environment enacted. Um, so you should have um, .ven at the front here, otherwise it won't work. Um, I'm gonna type py for Python user interface convert. And we're using six because we're using um, Qt6. Radio, I want to say um, X and then go hangman and actually name the, um, the UI file, dot UI. And I'm going to um, do out dash O and say the file that I want to be saved to, um, hangman.py. So that's the hangman UI, that's this file, this file here, and I want you to save it. And I'm going to replace the other one that's there. So let's go enter, and she just writes right over the top of that now. So if I now run, run hangman, so I'm in the hangman file, if I run that, we should have the new, hey, user interface has popped up. So, okay, so now I've got the new user interface. Good. So what are we gonna add in? So we need to start thinking about um, the data flow and how the information again flows through our different modules. So once again, we have our different modules here. We have the, the um, user interface module, we have the controller and we have the model. So what happens when we actually, the user logs in? Okay, well, first off, they're in the login screen, right? So then the controller needs to get the username from the login screen. It needs to get the password from the login screen. It then needs to send the username to the data store and then gets the stored, stored password for that username. Um, compares the password to the store password. Um, if the passwords don't match, they send a message to the message label. If the passwords do match, they send the username back to the data model and get the user ID. And we need the user ID so we can keep a track, save it into memory so we can use it for later on. Um, you'll find that later on when we, video five, we'll be dealing with that. But we need to get the username back and then we need to change the user um, interface to say, hey, we're now in the game. We're no longer in the, in, the, um, in the login screen. So there is two interactions between the hangman.py and the data store. Now, as always, I wanna start with the data store code. We can do it, we can test it, we can make sure that it's returning the information that we suspect, that, that we expect, and that way it will resolve any issues or actually make it easier to troubleshoot if things go wrong. So what are the two of them? Let's get back here. One of them is um, get user ID and the other one is get password. Rightio, so let's bring that down here and let's get started. Right, now we'll come back to our data store over here. 
To to make life a little bit neater and to make our structure a bit neater, we're going to actually go about um, structuring our data store because it's going to be a lot bigger at the end of this program than what it actually was before. So we've got different types of methods. We've got the initial methods up here. Then we're going to have, and I'm going to use um, comments to structure this. We're going to have our um, get methods. Radio. So the get methods are going to be a listing of where all the methods are down here. And then further down, we have different types of other methods. And so I'm going to add another one down here, a couple of lines in between, and call this add methods. Okay, so we've got methods that get data from the database and methods that will add data to the database. Okay, so we've got the add methods and the get methods. Right, so now let's go into our get methods and come to the end of here. Remember two lines between methods, please, to make it nice and stand out. And this one is our get password, password method. So we're going to define the method, method and say get password and try spelling it right, password. I'm going to open it. It needs to be self, okay, because obviously we're getting it from this data store that we have a thing. Now, and we need to actually have, if we go back and look at our videos to get the actual password, we need to send the username and get the stored password back. So we are receiving a username. So you can say user will do. Right, remember in the last video we talked about type hints? Um, so the type hints we have for arguments, for these up here, the way you do it is after you type the argument, before you put another col um, comma in for another argument, you put a colon and then you type the type. So it's gonna, the user that's been supplied should be a string. Rightio. So it gets here and checks and then What's going to happen is it returns obviously a string back, which is a password. So I go here and go as such. Um, so we've got that set up. All right, so we've got that. We need to actually also um, then put the colon and then go enter. Ready? Right, yeah. So that is our initial string, um, our initial um, defining of the of the method. Now I'm going to put my doc string in here and just simply need to say what the doc string does. It re Turns the user's password um, if it um, if it exists, right? Sorry, if it exists um, or none, because remember they might put you might have been registered. Um, so we need to say what is going to return if it. Um, if it doesn't actually have a password. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna say what's it returning? It's returning a string. Okay, so that's better. So get password. This is the user, it's being passed in, the argument passed in, it needs to be a string, and then it's gonna return a string. Okay, so again, in our um, in our SQL, because we're doing an SQL query here, we have um, two parts that we need to do to actually do the SQL command. So the first one, remember, is to execute. So we're going to execute, um, sorry, we're going to off the cursor, we're going to um, execute. And again, I need a place to put my SQL query in here, and this is how I structure it out. So I can type my SQL so it's readable by humans as much as possible. So I'm going to select password. Um, from users, right? And now I'm just going to check and let's have a look at the actual database to make sure that is correct. So I'm going to the structure. I'm going to check passwords, which um, is in users. So users and password, that's correct. Now I'm actually going to stop using that and I'm going to use SQLite. Um, which is an add-on we got over here, a it, SQLite, which is an extension that I have for um, for Python. The reason I do that is because I need to close the database because if it's open and I try writing to it later on, it doesn't like that because it's locked. So I'm going to right mouse click on here and say open database and now I can see the explorer down here. It's going to say, here's my database. Right, so users, 
Um, user ID, text and number and password is in there, that's fine, that works. Okay, so from users, I get that and where, what do I want to return? I want to return the restriction of where name equals, well, the user, doesn't it? Whatever they put in as the user. But there's a special way that we need to do this and it's called um, parameterized. This is designed to prevent SQL injections, which is a very common way of hacking um, code. So what we need to do, what we do in Python, is I'm gonna put a colon in front of name like that. And this colon says, go look for, after, after this command, go look for a dictionary, radio, and then look for the key in that dictionary. So I'm gonna put a dictionary in here now, and say, right, here's my, dictionary and the key is going to be name right and then I'm going to point that key I'm going to point that to this um, parameter which is coming the um, argument that's coming of user right so let's just go through that what happens is that it, um, it will execute this command select password from users where goes name equals oh okay i've got to go look at the following dictionary look at the following dictionary and i've got to look for name and i see name here and it tells me go and look for the variable user which is up here which is what was passed in okay so we've got all those and that is our first part that is the actual execution of the command so remember once you execute the command you then need to fetch and return the results we go into this habit of doing it this way so um, we get used to um, it all the time. So return self dot cursor. Now, you can see here when I say fetch, we have a few different fetch options. Fetch all, fetch many, fetch one. That gets all the results. That gets a, a you can say how many results you want. You can be, you know, 10 or whatever. And this obviously just gets one result. Now, this being a password for a user and the user should be a, a unique name, we should only say get, get one because we fetch one because we only get one, um, one result because the user should be unique. All right, fetch one, open close brackets. So I now have results. I want to return results. So now, <laughs> I've done that, I can go into test and I can try testing out my new method. So I can say get password and look, it's coming here. User should be a string and it's going to return a string. So I need to return use demo. How do I know that? Because I've made the database. But if you're not sure, you can use your SQL Lite Explorer and click on this little side arrow here and it will show you all the values that are currently in that table, user table. Right here, so I'm click that off. So demo, and so we'll see here that it should return to me, it should say happy, right? So if I'm gonna run that, bang, and I get happy. But once again, happy is in a tuple, isn't it? So I don't want it to be a tuple, I only want the first element of that tuple, because that's what those brackets and parentheses are. So I come into here, so instead of returning um, results, I need to actually Return, actually, I wanna also check something. I should check something else. What about if they don't have a username in there? Return, so Michael returns none. Mm. Okay, so it's either happy in a tuple at none, but if I try to process a none the same way as I process the tuple in our, our, in our get word option, then this can come up with an error. So let's come back to data store and I need to process results now. So how am I gonna do that? So let's try. Let's try this really cool thing, right? It's called try and accept, and it actually allows for um, error collection in um, Python. So it says this, try return results zero. So what it's gonna do is gonna try results, right? Try to get only the first element of the results. If that causes an error, if it causes an error, and it would if it returns none, because you can't have the first element of none because none's not a tuple, then you then run what's in the accept um, section, which is gonna be return not radio. Try return none. Ooh, not happy with that. Um, because I misspelled accept. 
Ah, there we go. Happy now. Rightio. So again, it's going to come down. It gets our return. So if we get this tuple up here, right? It's going to say, okay, give me the first element of that tuple, right? And it works and no errors are thrown. So it's going to return only the first element. It's going to return happy, right? But if, if it doesn't, if it, um, if it is none and it tries to get the first element of none, it says, oh, there's an error here. It will then run what's in the accept block, which is return none instead. So I'm gonna save that, come over to test, and we'll test with Michael and see if that works. That's happy, it's shown return none. And if I test demo, it should say happy, and oh, the other one was Jeff, wasn't it? Jeff, oh, don't read that. If I run, put Jeff in, it'll return jolly, awesome. So that's what we've done. We've actually managed to get those through. Um, so I've run my test. I'm happy with that. It's all working. Now let's do the other the other change we need to do to the data store. So get store password as one. Then last one is then get user ID. Okay, and we'll deal with all the other stuff in relation to controller later. So get user ID. So we've got another get method. Come back to the data store. We're in our get methods here. Radio, again, make sure there's one, two lines here. Define, and it's gonna say get user ID. Yep. So get user ID. Um, we need to start it with self because it's getting it from this data store. Um, we are again going to put a user in and that user is going to be a string. So the actual value that gets passed in, the argument that's passed in is a string. Um, and it's going to be called user. And in the end, this is going to return a integer. Right here. Um, the great thing about, about type hints as well too, that if the person puts a string, it doesn't put a string, it puts a different value in, it won't stop it. It just, it just gives the hint there for people to be aware. Right here. So what does this do? This returns the user ID uh, for the provided user. Okay, that works. So we come down to here and I'm going to, again, the first step of writing an SQL argument is self dot um, cursor dot execute. Open our brackets, put our multiple line string in and now type my um, type my SQL command. So select user ID, again checking the user ID is correct from user, right? From user, uh, capital U, user, and again, where name equals, and again, we're doing this whole thing of putting the par um, parameterized query in. So it says, go look at the dictionary afterwards and look for the key name and then insert whatever value is after that. And oh, so it shouldn't be name, it should be user, right? Yep, so here, so it says, comes down, runs the SQL query from user where name is, go look at the following dictionary and find the key name. It looks at the following dictionary, which is here, finds the key name, it says, go and get whatever value is in user. And that was passed in by the call to this method. Rightio, so we've executed our query. Now we need to fetch and return the results. Now we're gonna, you're gonna get sick of me saying this, but it's a little process we're gonna go through each time. So I need to go through and say um, results equals self dot cursor dot fetch again fetch one I need one and let's return it um, to see what it provides. Okay, return results. I'm going to press save here. I'm going to go to test. And I instead of get password this time, I want to say um, get 
user ID and I'll leave Jeff in there fine and it should give me let's just check it should give me um, one for that so let's see what it gives me let's play oh no such table user no such table user our oh, users there we are so come back to data store and go users right let's save that test run and it's returned one but it's returned it as a tuple again so I'm going to come over here to data store and I'm going to say instead of returning um, results I need it to only return um, just the first element of result or just fetch the first element here so when I up here I put it at the results so let's put it down here on the results okay return results zero okay so let's save that come to test and then run it again as returning one awesome or if I change it to demo is going to return two now we don't have to about it returning none because we've already checked that this isn't going to happen unless it is acceptable as so it comes back and says that this user does exist radio so that is now if we bring this back up here we have now done our get user id and we've done our get store password so out of all here we've done all the interactions between hangman and get user id so we need to do the other stuff here we need to go get the username we need to get the password um, from the login we need to send the username um, get the store password, compare them, react to the, change the label if it doesn't match, if they do match, get the user ID and then change the UI. Right, so let's have a look. Let's go in, we've finished here, we've finished our data store, they're tested, we know they work. Come into Hangman, and now what's the first thing I have to do is I need to create the login symbol signal. So it reacts to the login button. So I'm going to come down to where I put signals, so enable button, signals, here we are. So here's our control buttons. Let's do the um, self.ui. Now remember I said that each of my UIs now start with what the screen was. So they're from the login screen and I want the login button. There it is there. And what I wanna do, I wanna listen for when it's clicked, right? And when it's clicked, I want it to connect to self. And what am I going to call this? Again, next to self dot check login. Radio. Now that doesn't exist at the moment, right? So, but that's cool. So, actually, not just check login. I just call it login. That might be a better name. All right, self dot login. So let's come down here now and go down to our um, slots. So scrolling down, here's our slots. New word button, letter button. Let's go to the bottom, okay, bottom of our slots. Put a method in here, so two, two lines um, before the next method, and we need to define our method of login. Radio, um, login just gets self, doesn't receive anything, doesn't pass anything, don't worry about our type hints. All right, our doc string though is checks, um, uh, checks that the entered password matches the stored password okay so done that there awesome it's going to check it so how are we going to do that so first off we need to um let's just plan this i need to get the connect credentials from the UI. Rightio, it's getting the credentials from UI, so we say username equals self dot UI dot LG um, user, it was login screen, username, and remember this is um, line edit, username line edit, and we want to get the text from there. So, if it you click the button, comes down, gets these values and stores in a username. Now we're only going to use username within this method. So we don't have to worry about putting a self in front of it. It is a variable which is defined only in the namespace in the scope of this particular method. Right, so we'll do the same for password. 
because we don't use it anywhere else in the program. We only use it for, for here. So self.ui.login uh, screen password line enter and text. Got the value there. They're both done. Rightio. So now I need to find the stored password. Password. Stored password equals, and this is when we can call our method that we just created. Self dot get um, self dot db dot get password, and to pass in. Oh, it says I'm going to pass in a string, which is username. So user. Um, name, radio, and it's going to return a string which gets stored into store password. Awesome. So now after we've done that, we need to test validity of the password. All right, so let's test it. So if stored password equals, sorry, remember if stored password, it comes back, it comes back as, can come back as none is not none. Radio. So if it's not none, we know it's actually in there. Okay, brilliant. So, um, so if it's not none, um, which I think is a, is a better way to do it. We'll do it this way. Um, if it's not none, um, then we say if stored password um, equals password there you go. Um, we can say self dot user ID equals self dot DB dot get user ID and again I need to put in a user name username and it's going to return an integer for me. So let's just have a look at that. Rightio. If, if they've registered, if it's actually been registered, so if it actually is not none, if stored password equals password, um, then we say user ID equals self dot that's where if it if it if they've registered then and the store password is the same as a the password, then get the user ID. That's awesome. And then we're going to change the user interface and we're going to change it so the um, stacked widget, the current widget is going to change to set current widget is going to be changed to our game screen, UI game page. Oh, there it is, game page. Right, so if they've registered, if the, part, if the username exists, and if the stored password is correct, then go ahead and get the user, the user ID, save that. Now, the problem is we haven't got this anywhere, so I'm going to deal with that in a second, right? So store that, okay, in user ID, and then change the screen to the game screen. So what's the other option? The other option is if stored password does not equal password, so we can say else, um, we can say if it doesn't equal password, so they've given the wrong password, we're gonna put a little message up to the login message label, right here, and we're gonna set the text to being, um, Incorrect password, right? And that's it. I'm changing, changing the else. It's still in login screen. Okay, so that's both of those happy. What happens if it's if it is none? If it's returning none, so that's an else here. Then what we can say is we can say if it isn't none, which means they haven't registered yet. You can say self dot ui. And let's change that message to say. Ooh, Let's try putting the right thing in. Um, login screen, message label, and we're gonna set that text so it says, user um, name not registered. Okay, 
So that's all good. We've got send the text to the username is not registered. Um, but I also need to allow for the fact that um, if it happens, I need to be able to save user ID. So we come up here, back up to the top, and we've got all of our game variables up in the init, in the constructor. Eh, initialize game variables, so let's make one which just says self dot um, user ID, and that equals none initially, and that will change when they log on. Rightio. So let's think, we've got that there. Let's, I think that's all working. Let's save it and see if it's going to throw any errors. Run. Hey, it's popped up. Awesome. So username, username was, um, let's just put the incorrect, uh, one which isn't registered yet, registered, Michael, and I'll put password, um, suite, login, username not registered. Awesome. So that's done what we want for that. Now let's put demo in and leave sweet there as it's the password's wrong. It should say incorrect password. Brilliant. And finally, if I put happy in and log in, it takes me to the there. So we've done that. We've put our two extra methods in here. So we are actually pulling the password out so we can compare it and now user ID would be stored, user ID of two would be stored in the main program under self.userID, which we can use later on in the game. So there we are, that's the end of our third video.